Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to discuss the new features in the latest Pandas 1.0.0 release. So let us go ahead and take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will start with the basic introduction followed by history and legacy of Python Pandas library and then I will start with the enhancements that are introduced in the latest release. Moving further, I will discuss the experimental new features and then I will tell you about the performance improvements followed by bug fixes. And finally, to sum up this session, I will mention a few other notable changes that came with the release. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. Also, check out Edureka's Data Science Python certification course. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let us begin our session. Now, you must have heard about the Python Pandas library if you have any prior experience with data analysis, data science, exploration, visualization, etc. It is basically used in data exploration, including the very first process in the data science life cycle. It is an integral part of data science when it comes to Python. What you might not be aware of is the fact that Python Pandas has released its stable release, which is 1.0.0, in the month of January 2020. And the various applications in which Python Pandas can be used includes economics, and it is in constant demand for data analysis. It can be used for recommendation systems, stock prediction, neuroscience, statistics, advertising, analytics, natural language processing, you name it, and you can use it for data analysis with Python. So let us skip right ahead and we'll talk about the very first topic in this session, which is enhancements in the new release. So the very first enhancement is uh, using number in rolling apply and expanding dot apply. And the new release has added an engine keyword to apply function, which allows the user to execute the routine using number instead of Cython. And using the number engine can yield significant performance gains if the apply function can operate on NumPy arrays and the data set is larger. The next enhancement was defining custom windows for rolling operations. So the new release has added a pandas.api.indexers.base indexer class that allows users to define how window bounds are created during rolling operations. And users can also define their own get window bounds method on pandas.api indexers.base indexer subclass that will generate the start and end indices used for each window during the rolling aggregation. And the next enhancement was converting to markdown. So let me open Jupyter Notebook guys and I'll show you what this enhancement actually is. So we'll go to Jupyter Notebook now. So I'll open the new file. I hope you guys are already familiar with Jupyter Notebook and if you have any problems in Jupyter Notebook or if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebook, we have a full tutorial on how to actually use Jupyter Notebook for data analysis or for any programming language, which is Python of course. So first of all, you have to import Pandas and before that you have to make sure that you have installed pandas on your system and for that you can actually use anaconda prompt and run a command that is conda install pandas and you'll be able to install it. I have already installed pandas so I don't have to do that again. I'm just importing the pandas library as it is. Now I'll show you what the enhancement actually is which is converting to markdown. Now in this enhancement the new release has added a function or a method which is to markdown for creating a markdown table. So for that I will make a data frame first of all. So I'll use the alias pd and now I'll make a data frame and inside this I'll mention let's say a or I'll just give a few values over here in a dictionary and I'll mention a few values. Now the second value or the second key is let's say b and give it some values as well. Now the same values I'll give it some other values and I'll give the index as well for the data frame, which is going to be, let's say, one, two, and three. Now I'll use the print statement, and inside this, I'll mention the to markdown function so that you'll be able to understand what it is actually doing here. So, this is how you use the to markdown function in the new Python pandas release. And to check the version, you can just simply use the alias and using the version command it will show you the version and actually I have used the conda update command for installing pandas 1.0.0 it has actually installed 1.0.1 which is the new release that has been there after the 1.0.0 
and these are the releases that will be having a few changes or deprecating a few changes that have been released in the latest release so there's nothing to worry about here i have just installed the latest version but make sure you read the documentation fully to understand what are the changes over here now moving on let's take a look at a new experimental feature that we have in uh, pandas library guys so we are calling these features experimental because these are not permanent and might be deprecated in the next releases depending upon the performances and starting with pandas 1.0.0 pandas will adopt a variant of semver to version releases so briefly deprecations will be introduced in the minor releases which is 1.1.0 1.2.0 etc and deprecations will be enforced in major releases that is 1.0.0 which is the first one this is the stable release that we are talking about and then the next one will be 2.0.0 and then so on like 3.0.0 etc and api breaking changes will be made only in major releases which is except for experimental features which i'll be talking about now so the very first feature in the experimental feature is the experimental na scalar to denote missing values so in the new release a new pd.na value which is singleton is introduced to represent scalar missing values so until now pandas used to several values to represent missing data which is np.nan is used for float data and np.nan or none for object data type and similarly we have for date time like data as well so the goal of pd.na is to provide a missing indicator that can be used consistently across the data types so pd.na is currently used by the nullable integer and boolean data types and new string data type so let's go ahead and take a look at this in Jupyter notebook guys. So what I'll do is I'll make a series pd dot let's say series and inside this I'll give a few values. Let's say one two. This is going to be my null value and I'll mention the data type as well. I'll give the data type as teacher 64. Let's say now when I print s over here we have this na scalar to denote the missing values instead of two. I write none as well. So this is how you can use this experimental new feature to denote the missing values. So the next one is dedicated string data type. So the added string data type or string D type is an extension type dedicated to string data. So previously until now strings were typically stored in object D type for numpy arrays. And now the string extension type solves several issues with the object D type numpy arrays such as you can accidentally store a mixture of strings and non strings in an object D type array and a string array can only store strings. The next one is object D type breaks D type specific operations like data frame dot select D types. There isn't a clear way to select just text while excluding non text but still object D type columns and when reading code. The contents of an object D type array is less clear than string. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook again to understand this better, guys. So let's make a series. Okay, wait. Make it a little bigger. So I'll make series, guys. And inside this again, I'm gonna mention a few string values. Let's just say add Eureka. I'll write one null value as well. And let's just write Python. Now after this, I have to mention the D type, which is the data type. And inside this, I can just simply write PD dot string D type. So as you can see I have the data type string over here for all these values. So this is how I can use the dedicated string data type or instead of this I can just simply write string over here. Let's see if we get any errors. No. So this is how you can use the dedicated string data type and the next one is a boolean data type with missing value support. So what it is the new release has added a boolean D type or boolean array which is an extension type dedicated to boolean data that can hold missing values. So the default bool data type based on a bool d type numpy array the column can only hold true or false but not the missing values but this new boolean array can store missing values as well keeping track of this in a separate mask so let's take it up to jupyter notebook again guys instead of just string over here okay we'll replace these values with true and false and change the data type to let's just say boolean so this is how we can use the boolean uh, data type with missing value support and we are able to use the missing values inside this as well and the last one is the convert d types method which is actually going to ease the use of supported in extension d types so in order to encourage use of extension d types string d type boolean d type integer 64 d type or integer 32 d type etc that supports pd.na 
the methods data frame dot convert d types and series dot convert d types have been introduced so let's take a look at a few of those so first of all i'll make a data frame guys inside this i am going to give a few values so inside the dictionary first key is x and i'm going to give a few values inside the list guys so let's just say python over here null value or missing value let's just say and i do record over here and similarly the next key is y wait i have to give a comma over here yes and i'm going to give a few values over here as well and the next key is z which is going to be let's say my boolean so i'll give true and false over here and a null value so this is my data frame guys all right so i'm going to check the data frames d types so we have object float and object now we're going to convert these data types so for that i'm going to make a variable c so i'm going to convert the data types all right and now i'm going to check the data types again so we have string boolean and integer 64 so this is how we can use the convert d types method to make it easier to use the supported extension d types now let us go ahead and take a look at a few performance improvements introduced in the new release guys so there are several improvements i'm going to mention a few over here so the first improvement is performance improvement in data frame arithmetic and comparison operations with scalars the next one is the improvement in indexing with a non-unique interval index and we have improvement when initializing a data frame using a range or a range data type we have a performance improvement in categorical dot search sorted and categorical index dot search sorted method and the new release has improved the data frame dot replace method when provided a list of values to replace after this we have a performance improvement in infer d type method when skip na is true and we have an improvement in index dot equals method and multi index dot equals method as well and last but not least we have a performance improvement when comparing categorical with the scalar and the scalar is not found in the categories so these are the performance improvements that have been released in the new pandas 1.0.0 release now let us go ahead and take a look at a few bug fixes in the new release so the pandas new release has added a test to assert the fill na which erases the correct value error message when the value isn't a value from the categories and we have also fixed the bug in data frame dot replace method and series dot replace method that would give incorrect results on categorical data the bug in the data frame dot explode would deprecate the frame in the presence of duplicates in the index has been fixed and the bug fix in data frame dot stack not handling non unique indexes correctly when creating multi index has also been fixed guys and last but not least we have a bug fix in data frame dot plot which was not able to plot when no rows were there so these are the few bug fixes I'm, i've just told you about there are so many around 13 bug fixes in the new release that you should check out in the official documentation guys if you want more information on what all the bug fixes are there so let's go ahead and take a look at a few notable changes in the new release guys so these changes that i'm going to talk about are backward and compatible api changes that were introduced in the new release which is data frame dot rename now only accepts one positional argument so data frame dot rename method would previously accept positional arguments that would lead to ambiguous or undefined behavior so from pandas 1.0 only the very first argument which maps labels to their new names along the default axis is allowed to be passed by position and the next one is pandas dot array method inference changes so pandas dot array method now infers pandas new extension types in several cases for example string data including the missing values now returns a arrays dot string array similarly for integer data arrays dot integer array and for boolean data it returns the new arrays dot boolean array and last but not least we have default d type of empty pandas dot series so initializing an empty panda series without specifying a d type will raise a deprecation warning now and the default d type will change from float 64 to object in future releases so that it is consistent with the behavior of data frame and index for more details on the new release refer to the official documentation of pandas 1.0.0 and now that we have come to the end of the session guys don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edureka also enroll to edureka's data science certification program with python the link is given in the description box below thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video 
please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!